Hi booktube, Lynette here and today's video is going to be another tag video. I'm going to do the reflection tag by the lovely Rachel over at the channel Rachel Kerris. Rachel created this tag because she'd seen the end of the year tag going around and that one isn't really about the end of the year, it's a tag about your reading up to the end of the year. Whereas Rachel wanted to do one that was a tag of um, an end of the year wrap up basically rather than doing separate end of the year videos she she wanted to do some kind of tag towards that and as soon as i saw that she'd done it i knew i had to get in on it myself i will link rachel's channel down below and i will also link her video um either in the cards or down below i'll try and do both if i can so that you can go and check out her video and hear her talking all about it herself but let's get on with all of the questions so question number one is, what are some of your standout books for the year? I've picked three for this question. The first one I'm going to take off of the pile is Assassin's Fate by Robin Hobb. This is the final book in her Realm of the Elderling series, a 16 book series that she's written. All the rest of them I can see behind me there. Um, and yes, I just, this is the culmination of 16 books of stories um over 50 years of storytelling not not that she's been writing them for 50 years but from the first book to the final book there's about 50 years um in time span and it just ah, oh, i just absolutely loved it i've gushed about it already um in my wrap-up video uh, that i had for november i think it was i'll link it in the cards or down below anyway um but I absolutely, absolutely adored this book um, and this series and this author. I absolutely adore her writing. It's very rich, but it's not, um, it's very easy to consume. Uh, so you're, you're being taught information about the world that she's uh, writing about without realising you're learning all these things. So I do highly recommend whether, I've said it before, if you're new to fantasy or if you're an experienced fantasy reader, Robin Hobb is just perfect for any any fantasy reader and I, I highly recommend it to just about everybody. The second and third book that I'm going to hold up, I'm going to hold them up together and I'm going to show you one after the other. Um, the first one is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller and the third one is Ariadne by Jennifer Saint. Now I'm going to talk about these both together because these introduced me to um, some stories that actually I'd never tr really tried before and I just drew me in and I I just and anything now I have a real hunger for these so Song of Achilles is about um, Achilles and Patroclus and their love affair following them from young boys to young men and it ultimately culminates in the Battle of Troy and the devastation that causes Achilles to go on the killing spree that he does uh and i just absolutely loved it i read this one first and i've heard about greek myths um growing up and i kind of had a vague interest in them um but i'd never really thought about exploring retellings now this book is 10 years old now um and it's had a real revival of hype on youtube and tiktok and instagram and it is very much beloved and a darling um of them all and Madeline Miller has also written Circe which I didn't get to this year but I do have it on my shelves at some point and I believe she is currently writing a Persephone based retelling um, but after I'd read this yes I was very definitely in the mood for Greek myth retellings and I, that's when I went on to pick up Ariadne. Um, Ariadne I read back in September and I just absolutely fell in love. For starters, this cover is stunning. Um, but also the writing, I just... She wrote from... I've said this in my wrap-up as well. She wrote from the female perspective, whereas a lot of the, the mythology and everything is written from the male perspective because obviously back then, um, in those days, men were more dominant than women. So she's actually taken it and she's written it in... Um, from the women's perspective and it's a slightly different take on the story so you get a different you get a different perspective on Dionysus you get a different perspective on Theseus 
um, and you get a different perspective on the story overall because actually there are portrayals in here that if you look at it from Dionysus and Theseus point of view you don't see those betrayals in the same light um as if you and again it's as as it says there are two sides to every story and i think jennifer saint um very much showed that in this book that there are two sides to every story and you might want to listen to both sides before you make up your mind but yes both this one and song of achilles really really um wet my appetite for greek myth retelling so like i say so i've got circe um on my shelf um i think i've got a thread needle which is right at the top um i think that is actually another greek myth retelling but obviously it, it's inspired by um and i've read some roman inspired retellings as well this year roman inspired novels and yeah just really glad that i picked these up and i'm looking forward to more especially by jennifer saint and also by madeline miller herself question number two is which books do you wish you hadn't wasted your reading time on this year? I've got four books that came in under three stars this year. Um, three of them were romance novels and I read kind of around about the middle of the year and they were all very definitely two stars at that point. Um, I just didn't get on with them at all. I just, yeah, they were, they were, I think they were science fiction based um, and I just didn't get on with it. Sci-fi is not really my cup of tea i don't read a lot of sci-fi um and if i do i tend to prefer the more fantastical so ra not romance based basically um but yes uh, the first one of those is royal obsession by cindy freiberg the second is not quite terran by celia carl writing as erin tate and the third book is breathless by eve carter now i couldn't really be bothered to actually research them for the purposes of this video um i can't actually remember what any of them were about and i gave them two stars at the time so that's um yeah i think that tells you everything you need to know about these it wasn't great writing um they were the stories although short weren't very fleshed out very well there were there were too many questions i think especially with royal obsession there was a real hint of stockholm syndrome to the romance and that doesn't actually do it for me at all but then there was a fourth book that came in under three stars this year and i talked about this one only in my november wrap-up again and that is the silence of herondale by joan aiken this is a murder mystery novel but there's not really much of a murder mystery about it um, it's only a short novel so she had a lot to write about in a very short space of time and I just felt it wasn't given the care that it needed. Uh, it's written in the mid 60s and set in the mid 60s and it's set on the Yorkshire Moors and yeah I just I wouldn't go back to it and I probably wouldn't pick up anything by her again. So question number three is what are some books that surprised you the most this year that you weren't expecting to enjoy quite as much as you did the first one of those i'm going to hold up and that is meet me in london by georgia toffolo please excuse the charity sticker i can't get it off um i actually had this as an advanced copy from netgalley last december and i never got around to reading it until the beginning of this year and i thoroughly loved it now it has been ghost written um georgia toffolo's name is to it she does write a little bit she does it in collaboration with other writers it is um a mills and boone um but it's fade to black it's not um out and out steamy romance but it is romance and yeah i didn't have very high expectations i'd never heard of the um additional writer and i can't remember i can't remember her name either um louisa george um i'd never heard of louisa george before either so yeah i was i was pleasantly surprised because then but i think by the time i got around to reading this i think the the second book in the series was out coming out and i'd missed the advanced reader copies um but i did go and buy a copy of the second book and read that one as well and subsequently when the third book came out i managed to get an advanced copy of that one again and i bought a copy to keep on my shelf so i actually have copies of all three of the books there is a fourth one due out next year and I'm checking NetGalley pretty much every other day to see if I can get an advanced copy of that one as well, because that's how much I really enjoyed these books. So, yes, very, very glad I picked those up. 
And another book that surprised me with how much I enjoyed it this year is One Day Like This by Scarlett Cole. Again, this is a romance novel. This is quite a steamy romance novel. It's based around um, a rock band set uh, who are from Manchester in England. And it's about the uh, guitarist, one of the guitarists, and the drummer's little sister. They've been in love with each other since they were teenagers, although it's unacknowledged. Um, and something happens which throws them together and they have to acknowledge it and they go from there. I really enjoyed it. It's I was expecting going in to have 200 pages of they love each other, love, love each other, they love each other. And then 100 pages of them being separated by something stupid. They should have just talked to each other. And yeah, away we go. However, it wasn't actually like that at all. Both this one and Next Time I Fall, which is the second book in the Sad Friday series. Sad Fridays is the name of the band. Um, she very much, the, the couples actually are together. They are very much together. They don't let anything stop them from um, coming together. The silly things that in other romance novels would have triggered a whole lot of not talking to each other and splitting up doesn't happen in these books and I think that is what actually surprised me the most is because they were just so there were there was tension and there were issues for them as couples but they worked through them in an adult mature way and they were just a breath of fresh air for me uh, like that and I definitely have the next book in the series whose name escapes me um, but it's following the drummer Luke and I've definitely got that on pre-order for when that comes out in February, I think. So roll on February because I really want to read it. I really want to to get to all the guys in this band. I really want to get to their happy ever afters because they're, it's just such great writing and I'm really enjoying it. Question number four is which books did you not get to this year that you wish you had? And I've got a few. Um, some of them are because they're series continuations. Some of them are because they were books I was anticipating and didn't actually get to at all. Um, but the first one I'm going to talk about is Rose Madder by Stephen King. I've been saying month after month after month, I am going to reread this book. This has to be the first year for quite a few years where I haven't read this book. Um, and I don't know what it is. I adore this book. It's my absolute favourite Stephen King. Um, I've spoken about it a lot. I spoke about it a lot this time last year because I'd read it this time last year. And it had been gifted to me as well um, during the month of November last year. So I have talked about it a lot already, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but my favourite Stephen King. And I really, I, when I get to the end of a year where I haven't read it, I always regret it. And it usually then makes its way to the top of the reread pile um, in the following year. So I look out for this one actually being read in 2022. Another book that I didn't get to this year, which I know exactly why, and it's the size of the thing, and it's Lord of Chaos by Robert Jordan. This is book six of The Wheel of Time. Um, you've probably heard of The Wheel of Time if you spend any time on YouTube at the moment. Amazon Prime have made it into a TV series. I haven't watched the TV series. I've watched the first 15 minutes of the first episode, put it down, haven't gone back to it. Don't know why just didn't grab me in those first 15 minutes. However, I am rereading the series and Lord of Chaos is the next book for me to read. It is over a thousand pages. Um, yeah, not, not quite. Actually, the story doesn't quite go up to a thousand pages, but we are in the realm of 990 pages for this one. It is Mahusiv. It is one of the biggest books in the series. And it's also the start of what is known as the Robert Jordan slog. From here on in, the books get a little bit tedious to read. And I know this because I've read this one before. Um, I eagerly awaited the release of this one when it came out in uh, the late 90s, I think, early 2000s, when I was absolutely in love with fantasy. And I read A Crown of Swords and I read The Path of Daggers and I DNF the entire series on Winter's Heart. I want to get on and read this. I want to power through. Um, can't really talk very much about what it's about. I don't really remember what it's about. Like I say, there are 900 pages of story here, which can be a little bit tedious to read. I'm hoping it's going to be, it's going, going to be on a TBR for 2022. 
I'm saying it now, this book is going to be read by the end of next year, for definite, because I just need to get on and power through. The last few books in the series apparently are absolutely stunning. Far, far better from book 10 onwards, I've been told, and I really need to get on with this. So it's definitely going to be there next year. Another series continuation that I wanted to get to this year but didn't is Wondersmith, The Calling of Morrigan Crow by Jessica Townsend. I read Nevermore, um, The Trials of Morrigan Crow, earlier this year, I think for some kind of readathon, and I was reading mostly middle grade books. Absolutely loved it. The only thing I didn't get for me is Nevermore is very much compared to Harry Potter. I don't see the comparison other than the fact that Morrigan Crow has to have an education. Um, I don't get it. I really don't get it. Um, but I absolutely love these books. And I keep looking at Wondersmith and thinking I need to pick it up, but I don't get to it. But I have the third book as well. I have Hollow Pox. Um, I'm filming this on Boxing Day. Um, so the day before you're going to see this. Yesterday I spent the day with my nephew, who I talk about quite a bit on this channel. And he said to me, have you read the Nevermore books? do you have hollow pox? And I said, I've got all three. I just haven't read Wondersmith and hollow pox. And he said to me that I have to read them. So again, this is definitely going to be on a TBR in 2022. And the final book that I didn't get to this year, but I'm actually quite disappointed in myself because it was one of my most anticipated reads of this year. And that is Camelot by Giles Christian. In this, we are following Gawain and Galahad. And it's following on from Lancelot's story, but it's not an immediate connection. It's just in the same world. So again, we're following Knights of the Round Table. And I absolutely loved Lancelot. And when I saw that this wasn't coming out in paperback until the middle of this year, I just, I was gutted um, because I didn't want a hardback because the other one was in paperback. And I'm fussy and I don't like to have a mixture of hardbacks and paperbacks in the same series on my shelves they either have to be one or the other um so yeah so I was really looking forward to this one I never got around to picking it up and it just sits there looking at me when I'm lying because my bed at the moment is still opposite my bookshelves um and it just catches my eye every time so I really need to get on and read this because I've always loved the stories of Arthur surrounding King Arthur and medieval Britain um so definitely, definitely need to try and find a way to fit this in next year. Question number five is what has been your biggest bookish accomplishment of this year? Spoiler for my um, goals check in uh, for this year. I have managed to read almost double the reading goal that I set for myself. I actually set myself the goal to read 48 books this year. And so far I've finished 92, potentially going to be 93 um but december is just um my reading time is just all over the place at the moment uh so i'm really really proud of myself for actually managing to do that i at the start of the year when i set the goal i wasn't quite feeling books um the so i set myself quite a low goal and i was really happy actually when i got halfway through the year and i'd already met that goal um other than that, a uh, fairly recent achievement is I hit 100 subscribers on YouTube. I have been uploading videos since 2017, very sporadically in those first few years. I didn't really start uploading them with any real kind of timetable until the beginning of last year. Um, so my my growth has been really slow going, but this year it has just for me, it's it's just been phenomenal. I've gone from about 20 subscribers at the start of the year to, to over 100 now. And I just want to say thank you very much to everybody who's watching this who's subscribed recently. Thank you very, very much. And I'm very glad you're here and I hope you'll stick around for a long time to come. Question number six is very similar to question number five, but it's what are some of your top bookish moments this year? And I have to say... Finally finishing Robin Hobb is definitely one of those. I started reading Robin Hobb um, almost 20 years ago and it's taken a long time. I know Assassin's Fate didn't come out until about four or five years ago, but I really have been looking at these and wanting to finish them for a long time, wanting to finish the series for a long, long time. So I'm really glad that I actually finally got round to finishing them and yeah that's just one of the 
even though it's bitter, it's a bittersweet um, moment because there is no more in this world. Um, it will be a joy to go back and start reading them all again from the very beginning, knowing where it leads and looking out for those little nuggets of clues and information um, that will help inform me as I read the final books and reread the final book. So, yes, that's definitely one of my top moments of this year. Question number seven is if you make bookish social media content, what uh, piece are you most proud of? I have to say, I think it's my bookshelf tour. It wasn't the best bookshelf tour in the world. I know that. Um, I've got a lot of practice to do on that. Um, maybe in the new year when I'm finally moved in, maybe I'll do another one. Um, and also I've made a couple of reading vlogs this year, which was really alien to me. I'm, I, I'm quite happy to stand here talking at the camera. Um, but then when you're trying to film content and you can't really do very much outside of the home because of restrictions, it does actually make it a bit more difficult. And again, you have to be quite wary. I, I felt I had to be quite wary of spoilers. I'm very good at giving away spoilers. Um, I talk very carefully, which is why I don't talk very much about the plots of the books when I tell you about them, because it's very easy for me to get carried away and tell you everything you need to know. Um, so that you don't need to read the book um, and I'm, I'm really proud of myself for not doing that quite so much this year and actually for making a couple of reading vlogs and putting those out there um, and yeah just go and check them out they are they are linked down below for you as well if you want to have a sneaky peek question number eight is reflecting over the year and the books that you've read are you happy with your stats are there areas you need to improve on I'm really happy with my stats um, I think maybe one of the areas I need to improve on is reading um, the, every day. I don't read every single day and quite often I get to the end of the day and I'm exhausted and I think I really want to read and I need to carve out more time for it. I need to not um, get carried away with other things and I just need to prioritise it. Things are changing, like I say, for me in the new year, I'm going to be moving um and my evenings won't be shared anymore um because I, I will be living on my own and not with my mum so I will probably make reading a priority whereas at the moment we tend to watch a lot more tv together rather than me sat in the corner reading so that's probably going to help um but yes I definitely want to try and read something every single day that's something that I'm not happy with within my stats and also I don't tend to read a lot outside of my comfort zone. My top two genres on Storygraph are fantasy and romance, which are my top two genres that I go to, and I know that. So I need to start reading more outside of my comfort zone. I've got a couple of sci-fi books on my shelves that I want to try and read. Um, I also want to try and read a few more in the way of classics, and I want to try and start picking up some more non-fiction books. So start looking at subjects that that I actually enjoy. Um, I, I actually enjoy Greek myths, Roman mythology, so you know maybe that's a good place to start. Um, but yes, yeah, so I want to try and improve on the actual scope of, of reading that I have, genres that I have. Question number nine is what goal do you wish you'd focus more on during the year um, and that maybe you can take into next year? Uh, I had a book buying ban at the beginning of the year and it went really well to start with and then the middle of the year hit and it just went all a bit to pot. Um, so I really need to, like my budget, my budget, my budget, my budget, my budget. I'm not going to be able to afford to buy books uh, for a while or at least not in the way I have been. One a month maybe. Um, yes. I really need to think about how I consume books. I really need to focus more on reading the books that I own. I have a lot of unread books and I think because I can't see them because they're on my Kindle, so I can't physically see the books. I don't think that encourages me to read them, but I am. Um, I had set up a TBR wheel at the start of last year to try and encourage me to read those books. But I think the format for me didn't work that well. I kind of abandoned it fairly early in the year. But I have a couple of reading challenges that I've joined on Storygraph, which are designed to help you tackle your TBR. And the prompts there in those challenges 
I have built into a new wheel starting for January. Um, again, this is a spoiler for January TBR because I'm going to explain it all then. Um, but yes, I'm going to use that. I'm going to try and use that more and to really try to encourage me to read more of the books that I own um, rather than in investing in new ones all the time and maybe just really buying new ones when there's something that I really, really want to own but can't wait for until Christmas when my family will all gift me lots of books because that's what I'm going to ask for next year. Spoiler to my family. Question number 10 is based on your answers to the last few questions. Make a bookish goal to carry into 2022. Um, and yeah, I'm going to go with the book buying ban again, um, but I'm going to try and keep myself honest. Back in September, I ordered this little beauty, which is the always fully booked planner by Little, Inkling, In little Inklings Design. That isn't an easy name to say. Again, I will leave her shop linked down below. I believe this is sold out. She might have a restock. I'm not sure. Um, but yes, definitely keep an eye out because while this cost me a small fortune, um, it's actually pretty perfect for what I want. It's got everything I want in it. But it has this page here, Bookish Hall. You get one of those for every month. And I'm going to try and use this to keep me honest. So I am going to do my best. Every time I buy a book, I am going to try and... It's, I mean, you've got to write down the date, the what the book is um, and where you got it from. But you've got this little column here, which doesn't have a title. I am going to try and write in the price. So I'm going to try and keep myself honest that way. Um, if I flick back to just before January, I also you also get this wonderful page. Can you see that there? Which is a wish list. So I'm going to write in there a wish list of books that I want to buy rather than um, purchasing them. You only get two pages, so I've got to keep it small. Rather than purchasing them, I'm going to try and make a wish list of the books that I want. Um, and then I've, like I said just now, maybe towards the end of the year when my family starts saying to me, what can we get you for Christmas? I can say to them, here's three or four books, pick one, buy it for me. Um, and see where we go from there also not related to the previous questions but yes I am going to try and use this planner it's absolutely stunning and I had to try and get it in the video somehow um you you have so many you've got series tracker in here uh you've got monthly spreads in here so you can actually do kind of like a diary type as well um you've got monthly wrap-ups you've got quarterly wrap-ups um so yeah, so I absolutely love it. So I'm hoping that I'm going to use this to the best of my ability. And if I do really well, then September, I'll find the money to purchase it again for next year. So that was the Reflection Tag by Rachel Kerris. Thank you again, Rachel, for setting this up. It was exactly what I wanted, exactly what I needed to wrap up my year in tag format without having to do lots of different videos. Um, and it's perfect. If you want to do this video, then I tag you down. I tag all of you to do it. It's absolutely brilliant. Really glad I've done it. Really glad I've discovered it. And please let me know if you do it. I'd like to come along and watch. If you have enjoyed this video, then please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe. And I make videos. They go up every single Monday. And I will see you all again in the next one. Bye.